Okay, um, I'm not Debbie Kolb, <laughs> as you noticed, um, but I am presenting Debbie Kolb's flash talk because she couldn't be here today. So um, uh, I'm going to follow as close as I can to the script that she gave me, but um, just want to say that this is this is her talk, and this is this is a thought piece that is based on an article that she was uh, recently invited to publish in um, Negotiation Journal. And what she was asked to do was to speak to the implications of the Trump era uh, for women negotiators. And she used this metaphor, her place at the table, um, because that was actually the title of the first paper that she ever wrote about gender in negotiation. I don't know if anybody ever saw it. Laura's nodding. Um, it was probably about 30 years ago, I think, that she wrote it, um, and maybe 25 years ago. Uh, and anyway, it was sort of her first foray into this you know, topic of gender and negotiation. She was a negotiation scholar, and then she was uh, running the Harvard Project on Negotiation. And she was, because she was a woman, she was asked to speak to issues of gender, about which she knew very little, but she then spent the rest of her career really um, uh, doing a lot of writing, um, written, has written several books, in fact, on that. So OK. Um, so. Uh, she talks about, in this article, three implications of the, cult of the Trump era. There are, uh, there are two downsides and one upside. So there are going to be three implications. The first one is that her place at the table is undermined. Um, and this is based on um, research that uh, suggests that when women are, are accepted as leaders, they feel they have a legitimate place at the table, and they negotiate quite effectively. But uh, so one implication of the Trump era is that his misogynist attitudes and efforts to, cur to curtail women's rights give men permission to exclude and diminish women, as is evidenced in this quote uh, by a woman executive whom uh, Debbie was interviewing shortly after the election. And she said, I was a bit delayed dialing into a conference call the day after the 2016 election. When I got on, I heard the others, all men, say that they were glad that now they were free to treat women differently. They would stand up to us. Shocked, I introduced myself. <laughs> so negative implication one. Neg negative implication two, when she's at the table, men attack. And this one is based on Trump's very style of negotiating. He says, my style of deal making is quite simple and straightforward. I aim very high, and then I just keep pushing and pushing to get what I'm after. And so she cites this um, a recent study by Huang and Lo, uh, two um, behavioral economists, who uh, found that Trump, with his hypermasculine negotiation style, serves as a role model for men. Post-election negotiated agreements were more elusive, and the primary reason was men acting more aggressively toward women. So that's the bad news. The positive implication is, nevertheless, she is demanding a place at the table. And here, she's um, actually deviating for her, from her article for a moment and um, drawing on the recent, I don't know if you saw this piece in the New York Times by Tina Brown, what happens when women stop leading um, like men. So she has some quotes here. So looking at some of these uh, recent images of women demanding their place at the table, and we see, um, and I quote from the article, a year ago, Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern of New Zealand was famous for being a world leader who gave birth while in office. Then came the slaughter in the Christchurch mosques, and overnight, the gravitas in her angular face beneath the hijab became an iconic image of global humanity. What we have uh, in our own country among 42 new women sworn into Congress, young rock stars like Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez electrify all of us with their passion and verve. But it's Nancy Pelosi, mother of five, grandmother of nine, who knows how to make the tangerine toddler in the White House eat his spinach. <laughs> it's salutatory um, to watch her uh, corral her rebellious democratic brood with committee treats and pacifying timeouts. <laughs> so those are the three implications that she sees um, for women negotiation in the Trump era. Thank you. <laughs>